When you look around the streets of Vancouver, it's not hard to tell that coffee is the opiate of this town. So it's no wonder this city is home to the National Barista Competition. And I figure with a little training and technical know-how, I could become a serious competitor. I mean, how hard can it be to make a cup of coffee? challenge? To train to become a barista in just five days and then enter the Canadian National Barista Championship. And to make matters more difficult, I don't even drink coffee. As I see it, coffee's a lot like wine. I mean, there's the old world style and the new world style. And then, of course, a thousand variations in between. I like a tall fat, grande, non tall, decaf, mente, caramel, extra hot, and then I like cream. Espresso. My mentor is Sammy Piccolo. He's a world-class barista who's revered for his artistic flourish. He's also emceeing this year's championships. So in a sense, I'm really getting an inside edge on the competition. Thank you for, me come down. Thank you for agreeing to train me. Hey, no problem, my friend. I think I'm gonna need all the help I can get. I think you will as well. It's <laughs> before. Sammy creates his masterpieces here at Cafe Artigiano, a Vancouver coffee mecca that's on the cutting edge of a welcome trend. Great coffee with an artist touch. So, uh, have you ever worked on a specialty coffee machine before? Uh, no, I've made coffee, you know, with the stovetop thingamajig and you heat the milk in the, in okay. the pot. Okay, this is the first time I've ever trained somebody so green for a, a national title, but let's do our best and let's uh, see what we can do here. I've got just five perfect. days to learn how to make a great espresso, pour a perfect cappuccino, and create my own signature drink. Cappuccino? That's a tall order for Sammy, so he starts with a simple overview of the coffee making process. Okay, further detail. Okay, so we're gonna use whole milk, and we're gonna make a grande latte. Most specialty coffees start with the same thing, a shot of espresso. What's happening there sort of looks like a mouse tail. Uh -huh. That's what we're looking for here. And we want our shot to extract at about three quarters of an ounce on each side in about 25 to 30 seconds. Many okay. coffee lovers stop right there, but a little milk or cream can turn a great espresso into a decadent cappuccino. I want you to put the steam wand in until you see that line. Turn it. Can you hear that noise? What's happening is the milk is stretched and it's creating volume. Well, this part looks pretty easy to me. Wait, wait, wait a sec. Why is this? You have to shut it off, Bob. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Ready, tidy, buddy. This is going to be fun. <laughs> hey, no use crying over spilt milk, right? We'll do our, our pour. I'm pouring the milk in the espresso. And what I'm doing is I'm softening the crema by moving around. I'm pouring it the same. The speed. art of the cappuccino pour is to blend the milk with the crema. And that's the dark foam that forms on top of the espresso. And that's the most easiest design called a heart. Now that can't be too hard. Do I want to try and get the foam in there or? Sure. Uh, uh, wait, how come I don't have a heart coming out of here? I, I think this is a, a, a that's little. That's a mushroom. I think we're in a little bit of trouble here, Bob. Oh. Not so good? Not so good, Bob. I'm not gonna lie to you here. I'm a little nervous. My reputation is on the line, Bob, okay? I need you to give me the same commitment as I'm gonna give you for this next week. No problem there. Hey, the winner goes to Japan for the World Championship. Just let me know what I gotta do. You're gonna have four tasting judges, okay? Okay. And they're gonna judge your espressos, your cappuccinos, and your signature beverage. So I'm making three different drinks. Times four. Okay, so 12 drinks in 15 minutes. Got it. Okay. Sure, what's the signature drink? Uh, anything you'd like, uh, as long as it doesn't have any alcohol. And I recommend it, it be at least 50% coffee taste. There's one thing I didn't tell you on the phone, and that is that uh, I haven't had a cup of coffee in 15 years. I actually, it's not because I don't like coffee, it's because I liked it too much, and I was kind of using it as a drug. And so I, I've been a tea drinker for the last 15 years. Bob, what separates a chef from a great chef? Uh, his passion, passion for what he's doing. Okay. I need you to find that love you had for coffee 15 years ago. There's only one way to do that. Oh, I know I'm gonna fall in love with coffee all over again. But it's the caffeine that I'm not so sure about.
So hey, what do you think? Oh my god, that is insane. We're gonna be working all day. You wanna win this competition? I expect you to work on this machine when you're at home. Wow, that was incredible. Man, am I ever buzzed. Sweet ride, huh? If I'm gonna do well in this competition, I've gotta learn all the essential techniques. I've gotta know the science behind it all, and I'm gonna have to master the art of the poor. And on top of that, I've got to re-educate myself about the entire world of coffee culture. And on that front, I think I know exactly who can help me out. It looks lovely. Steve Burgess, self-confessed coffee addict right. and petty criminal, but that's another story. So Steve, you've known me for years, and have you ever seen me drink a cup of coffee before? I believe that's the first, actually, the first sip I've ever seen. I'm really, really getting into the flavor, but this coffee culture and how it's exploded in the last 15 years? You love espresso, it's not enough to find a place that has good coffee. That's only half the battle, because the person who makes it, the person who puts it in your cup, makes all the difference, so. Well, what do you look for when you're looking for good coffee? One thing I tell you you can look for is what you've got right here. Uh, that coffee, you can tell, even without drinking it, you can tell that that's a good espresso, because it's got the creme on top, that dark chocolate brown layer of foam on top of a good espresso. See, if you get an espresso and it looks like a regular cup of coffee with nothing on top, you turn around and walk out after saying something bad in Italian. I'm telling you, think twice before you get into this, man. It's a lifelong commitment. <laughs> it's Wine's already put me into the poorhouse, yeah, so exactly. I think maybe I'll stay away from this. Well, listen, great hanging out. Pleasure. We'll, uh, we'll catch up soon. And good luck. I'll need it. I'm a firm believer that practice makes perfect, but I'm about to blow that theory right out of the water. I have a poison touch. Would you like a free latte? No charge. No, it just has a bad design. I've been training for the Canadian National Barista Championships here in Vancouver with master barista, Sammy Piccolo. Today, we'll be working out of a training space that Sammy has set up in his warehouse. The most important thing when you're dosing is your consistency. You gotta do everything the exact same way almost every time. Like a nice mountain like that, okay? okay. You're gonna move the coffee forward, backward. You're gonna covering up all the air pockets in here. And then you're just gonna do a mountain. Okay, just a nice mountain. It's just a level tamp, not too hard. Maybe about 15, 20 pounds of pressure. And then, with no pressure, you do a polish. Okay. Okay, go. Ready? Relax, every motion, you don't have to speed it up. Do everything with flow, okay? Great, next time polish. Shot, right? Just make it look like you're good. You're just looking at it a little. Good. Good. You're focusing on your shot, right? 26. Okay. You're cleaning now. Okay, you're at eight seconds, so count in your head. Looking at your shot. Perfect. They, they like the spouts to be clean. So before you put it in, water, wipe, off, in. The details are mind boggling. You're gonna wipe your spouts. I'm gonna give you my dummy's guide to steaming milk. I'm gonna make it as easy as possible. And it's spinning and it's whipping. And you see where my hand is? Mm -hmm. That's my thermometer. And once it's too hot to hold, I shut her off. It's like silk or satin, you see that? So this is gonna be about... That's how they get the milk mustache. That's right. Now that I know how it all works, Sammy brings me back to Cafe Artigiano, where he's putting me to the test in front of some paying customers. Bob, you're lucky I'm not making you wear that. I'm just gonna put it there, okay? Okay. Pour and fast. And then right about there, the eagle's gonna switch down. You see that cloud? Okay. Tall, low, fat latte. Push it down, push, wiggle, good. Ah, oh, just as I feared, a dairy disaster. I have a poison touch. You know what, you're like a white guy dancing, okay? Before so you were bad. too slow, now you're like <laughs> It's my sad, pathetic white boy rhythm coming back to haunt me again. <laughs> Spin it, but not too much. Good, wiggle. I feel this one is gonna be the one. 
You know what else you're doing, Bob? What? You're destroying that crema. Oh, man, this is about as frustrating as it gets. How can anything that looks so simple be so difficult? Would you like a free latte? No charge. No, it just has a bad design. Drink coffee? Man, I can't even give these away. Okay, Bob, just take a couple minutes to relax, all right? You know, I know you're looking at me and you're going, I could do that. But trust me, it's not as easy as it looks. I mean, I'm sending a message from my head through my arm to my fingers, I'm going, just just do the little squiggle. It's a little squiggle in a coffee cup. How hard could it be? But somehow the message is getting interrupted somewhere around here. It's really frustrating. Anyways, I'm going to do another 25. Make that 50. There's only a day to go before the competition. <laughs> Things are about to go from bad to worse. OK, no. Your milk is. I'm training for the Canadian National Barista Championships, and I'm totally stressed out. I mean, five days just isn't enough time. So hopefully today will be more fun. Marta Pan is a friend and a fellow chef. She's always full of great ideas, which is exactly what I need right now. I've got to create a signature coffee drink. I can pretty well do anything I want. It just play? has to be 50% coffee. Let's play. OK. So coffee, banana foam, some kind of something here. So if I do an eggshell. And you don't really want water. No. As you know, you want flavor, a concentrational flavor. How about okay. something cool? We knock around a whole bunch of ideas for about an hour. And then we finally hit on it. How about chocolate? Like a mocha kind of an idea, where you take chocolate and chilies. It's like a Mexican Absolutely. <laughs> it still needs a bit of refining, but I, I think our ingredients are going to make a great drink. Have fun! We're back at Sammy's practice space for our last training session before the big event. And right now, it's all about perfecting my signature drink. Let's give him a try. Will you tell me what you think? Perfect. Which one are we going to start out with? OK. Well, the first one is a Mexican coffee, OK? And I started by making a, a stirring spoon that has a chocolate truffle. Ooh. This is a cinnamon stick. And there's uh, chili powder in there, Mexican chili. It's actually chipotle, so it's a smoky chili. And there's also some cinnamon in here. So when I put this in the coffee and I stir it, the chocolate's going to melt. And that's how I'm going to get the chocolate flavor and oh, the cinnamon. That's a great idea. I'm going to make a vanilla foam. This is a real, a real vanilla bean here. And then scrape out. Mmm, smells like vanilla ice cream already. Like that. And I don't want to pour it too high, because now the whole concept is when I serve this to the judges, okay. I'll instruct the judges to take the spoon and stir it in. Perfect. Sammy likes it. So now it's on to the stuff that's killing me. Yep. Detail. Go. Where's that smell? The judges will be sitting at a table just like this one when I serve up my espresso, my cappuccino, and my signature beverage. So presentation is crucial, since I'll be waiting on them as though they were real customers. If I can't figure out how to serve them water, I don't deserve to be here. Cappuccino time. All right. I'm using whole milk, and that's for density and for sweetness. Start higher with the milk. Start higher. There you go. Start higher. Start as higher. our training continues into the night, I'm getting frustrated and tired. Forward. Go through. But this time, you're setting up your saucers, yep. you're setting up your spoons, then you're doing your milks. OK, no. Sammy's getting really impatient with me, especially with my cleanup. And he says that I'm getting sloppy, and that's going to cost me big points with the judges. Every time, right? Every time. You know what I mean? Your milk is For a couple of seconds, I actually think about throwing in the towel. There's a fundamental problem here. It's hurting my chances of doing well in the competition. Half this game is about the minutiae of the details of cleaning up. And Sammy's a real stickler for that kind of stuff. And that's definitely Sammy's personality. Like, that's his strength. And it's my weakness. And I'm having the hardest time basically changing my whole personality and my whole focus in such a short period of time. I'm exhausted when I get home, but I still manage to squeak in a little bit more practice before I hit the hay. After all, I am a glutton for punishment. Today's the day. I'm nervous, but I'm cautiously optimistic. I mean, I'm no coffee expert yet, but hopefully my experience in the kitchen should give me a leg up with the signature drink. If I could just finish top five, I'd be ecstatic. The judges take their places, and the games begin. 
So it turns out I'm one of the last up, which means that I get to watch some of the other competitors. These guys are all professional baristas and they're regional champions, which means I'm competing against the best of the best in the country. I figure this is the guy to beat. His name is Barrett Jones, and he works at Cafe Artigiano, another of Sammy's protégés. He's smooth, and he's a real pro. There's the pour I couldn't get. I mean, he looks like he could do that in his sleep. This guy's got everyone beat, until it comes to his signature drink. Blackberry syrup. Melon balls. Blackberries, melon balls, and coffee? Hey, this guy may be a great barista, but he's no chef. I'm dubious about this combination of flavors. The presentation's beautiful, the colors are all beautiful, but I, I can't make the connection between the ingredients in my mind and how it would taste on my palate. I'd be curious to see what the judges say about this, and if it doesn't work, then I, I guess that works to my advantage. His complicated signature drink almost puts him over time. He squeaks in under the wire. Steve Burgess arrives to cheer me on, and at the first opportunity, we both swoop down to taste Barrett's concoction. If this drink tastes good, then I am toast. Yuck. <laughs> I might have a shot, but only if everything comes together, and that's a big if. Okay, I'm up next. After spending five days training for the Canadian National Barista Championship, it's time to step up. The other competitors have been amazing, but I still think I've got a shot. Of course, that's only if everything falls into place. I have exactly 15 minutes to complete my three coffee drinks. Finally, the clock starts, and I'm off and running. Welcome, my name is Bob Bloomer. Personality counts here, so I begin by chatting up the judges and adding a surreal twist to the water pour. And my, you all look very thirsty today. <laughs> I'm feeling confident as I launch into the first phase of the competition. So far, so good. After each pull, the judges swoop in to inspect the grind. My espresso is one of the best I've pulled all week, and it gives me a shot of confidence. You gave him a month of practice. He could, he could be very, very good. You can tell that he's not a barista, but he's picking up very quickly on a lot of the details, and it wouldn't take him long. You can certainly tell he's a professional. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to say. He is food professional, professional, professional yeah. cook, professional yeah. chef. You're at the halfway point. And suddenly, I'm facing my mortal enemy, milk. Nothing has caused me more grief through training than the cappuccino. Miraculously, I get through the first part without any spray. That was the easy part. Now comes the pour. Let's hear from Paul Bloomer, everybody. I know I can't compete with the pros on this one, so I've come prepared. Now, judges, life isn't always fair, and hearts are very different, and so I haven't attempted to make perfect hearts because they're always, always very different. There are broken hearts, there are cheating hearts, there are hearts of gold, and I'm gonna allow you to look into each of these cups and decide what type of heart this is. I think I'm winning them over. Judges, while you're tasting that, I'm gonna be working with a fresh vanilla bean here and scraping out the bean itself. Just over four minutes remaining. The pressure is on, and if I wanna succeed, then I'm gonna to have to nail the signature drink. And on top of that, I'm racing the clock. Two minutes remaining. Let's hear it for Paul, everybody. In the beginning, I was leaving the chocolate stir spoon on the side, but I've decided that it's actually better to put it in right away so it has more time to melt. All right, judges, so what I have for you here is my Mexican jumping bean. It's a warm beverage with an espresso base. I'd like you to stir that till it's almost all gone off the stick and then give that a taste. Thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, patience and attention. I'm going to go run back and clean up my messy bedroom here. Success. I beat the clock and the judges seem pleased with my efforts. Oh, glad that's all over. I need a drink right now, and we ain't talking coffee. As I said, I believe he could finish in the top three, and I hope to God he did. 
Uh, can I get all the baristas up for the front, please? Seventh place, Jimmy Honest Chuck. This is the nerve-wracking part. Congratulations, Jim. And in sixth place, Morgan Allen. Victoria's very own from Cafe Fantastico, Catherine Pireno. This is incredible. One more name, and I'll be up on the podium. Fourth place, Mark Kraus. Oh, top three. I can't believe I've gotten this far. With 478 and a half points, Bob Newman. Third place in the Canadian National Barista Championships. And went head to head against the pros. Wow. What a rush, what a rush. And I, I don't think it's just the coffee either, but I totally feel like a winner. I can't believe that I actually placed as well as I did. And uh, I have so much respect for those guys who came ahead of me, man. They really have that craft down. It's just amazing. The whole thing's been such an amazing experience. Tall little fat latte. Guys, that was a lot of fun. You guys, made the, you made the top three. I toast all of you. But I have to admit, Old habits die hard. We're gonna throw you overboard. <laughs> ah!